Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to those of you who have been joining us by Facebook Live and Zoom, and welcome to any newcomers who are joining us this morning. We're so grateful to have you here. I'm going to turn it over to Sam to start us off with our opening chant. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is, grateful for the morning. Grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is, grateful for the morning. Grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is, God is all there is. Indeed, God is all there is, and we're so grateful we can all be joined together in this way, in this one life of God. A few announcements before we uh, begin the rest of the service. Uh, Wednesday evening, uh, my, we have a meditation that starts at 6.50, so at 10 to 7. The service itself starts at 7 p.m., and again, you can join us on the same link that you're joining us on right now. And my topic will be keeping an open heart. We invite you to please stay informed and up to date with us through our website, our weekly e-blasts, and our monthly newsletters. If you haven't already signed up for our weekly and monthly newsletters uh, that we send out via email, please go to our website, nhcrs.org, and sign up today. We have a practitioner list on the website, so if you would like to connect with one of our practitioners for sessions for prayer and uh, spiritual support, please go to the website. You can look at the list and uh, connect with any of the practitioners listed there. Many of them do sessions over the phone and Skype and Zoom. Grief support. This group that's facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur will meet today via Zoom at 1 p.m. All are welcome. Anyone that is feeling any sense of loss, going through any kind of grief right now, this is, Carol is just a masterful leader in this, and you can find the link for that on our website, nhcrs.org. Our youth church uh, for ages five through 11 meets via Zoom every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. with uh, practitioner Julie Jacobs. Our teen church for ages 12 through 19 meets via Zoom every Sunday at 9.45 a.m. and Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. with practitioner Liz Racy. We will begin a new Zoom meditation for North Hollywood Church. It's a 15-minute meditation that will be uh, every Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. And uh, that will be led by occasionally Dr. Mark and myself and uh, practitioners here at the church. And I know Dr. Mark will be leading the first one tomorrow. I'll be leading the second one on Tuesday. Uh, we hope you, if you want to continue to connect with your community and develop your meditation practice, please join us for that. Uh, again, the link for that is on our website. Please know that at the end of our service today, uh, you can get prayer with a practitioner. Uh, for up to 30 minutes after service, we can connect you with practitioners via Zoom uh, on our Zoom call. 
Uh, you can also get prayer through our ministry of prayer uh, by dialing the church office. I dial a prayer, which is uh, a recorded message and prayer by a practitioner that you can listen to. And you can send in prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org. Um, we will also be taking donations up until 11.15 a.m. this morning uh, after the service, uh, probably 11.30, actually, if you would like to call in and give us a donation via credit card or debit card. Uh, also, please know that on Monday, uh, May 11th, Dr. Mark will begin a five-week uh, class on the Four Agreements uh, by Don Miguel Ruiz. And uh, we, you're encouraged, if you, many I know already own the book, you can get it on Amazon.com. You're encouraged to read the first chapter between now and the 11th. All are welcome to this class. That, uh, more information on that is also on our website. So if you've not been to our website, nhcrs.org, there's a lot of information there. We hope you'll keep up to date with what we're doing and ways we're staying connected with you. And speaking of staying connected, let's join together in prayer. So let's turn our attention inward and absolutely turn to that place that can sense a connection beyond the physical that can feel a connection with all life everywhere. Because truly, all the forms here in creation are interconnected in the one life, the one power, the one infinite invisible, that infinite vibration of love and pure intelligence that is God that is the life of each and every one of us. I know that that nature of God inhabits each of us fully and equally at all times. We just need to open to it to experience and express it more fully. And so I know that that presence of God is unfolding throughout our time together, that this service is a divine idea unfolding in the mind of God and that each and every one of us plays a part in it. I absolutely know that spirit is flowing through us in that sense of interconnectedness that we can feel even when we are not physically together in the same place. I know that we are touched and uplifted by its presence operating through our musicians, Sam and Karen, and our soloist, Margaret, today. I know that we feel the love and devotion of our practitioners who are holding vigil offsite and all those who are supporting this service here and remotely. And I absolutely know that we hear the perfect word of God through Dr. Mark this morning, that the word that he speaks is the word that we all need to hear to awaken to that presence, to feel that essence of God in us and to experience and express it more fully. And so how grateful I am right now for all the healing and revealing that I know occurs during this time together. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
So please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's in So this is our time to meditate, to come together, and to just commune with that presence of the divine that lives in each of us. And so for the next five minutes, I invite you to silently repeat to yourself, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just close your eyes, get still, and silently repeat, God is the love that I am and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
you're bouncing back, you're breaking through to things you wouldn't dream but ache to do. The storm has come to bear a brighter view in the middle of a Great, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to have you with us out there in uh, technical land. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about what I think of as uh, going beyond positive thinking. So very often when people say, oh, science of mind, I know what that is. That's positive thinking, right? And when I hear that, I, I almost cringe a little if I tell you the truth, because I think there's so much more to our teaching than positive thinking. Ernest Holmes, I think, in his wisdom, was really preparing us uh, in this type of teaching to move into more mystical consciousness. But in Science of Mind, where we begin is that we maintain a positive mental attitude. We maintain a positive speech. We maintain a positive uh, imagining in our mind. We try to keep that positive focus. You know, years ago, uh, Norman Vincent Peale wrote a very important book for many of us. It was called The Power of Positive Thinking. Um, and I'm thinking about a story that I heard when I was young in religious science, and it was that Ernest Holmes, the founder of our church, who wrote the Science of Mind textbook, showed his textbook to Norman Vincent Peale. Apparently, they were friendly. And Norman Vincent Peale read the textbook, and he loved it. And he said that he agreed with everything in the textbook. And then he said some other things, too, which are not relevant to my topic today. And so um, I really like that, though, because so often uh, there are comparisons between Norman Vincent Peale's The Power of Positive Thinking and the philosophy of the science of mind. You know, but why this is so important, why having a good attitude, why having a positive, affirmative outlook on life is important is because repetition, the things that we say to ourselves over and over and over again, is, is the mother of skill, really. That, um, 
Uh, that practice makes perfect. We've all heard that, but you know, it's not actually practice that makes perfect. It's perfect practice makes perfect. Because if you practice incorrectly, what you do perfectly is something incorrectly. Doesn't that make sense? Right? So we have to do the, per the practice. Perfect practice is what makes perfect. So to be positive minded, though, is, um, is not enough. You still have to do your part on earth, whatever it is that God, that spirit, that the universe indicates to you that is yours to do, you have to take some action here. So in any situation, what I think we do is I think we have to focus on what do we have right now currently. This would be a perfect thing for us to do right now today in the world that we are living in. Don't look at what you don't have, but look at what you do have, right? And and you could ask yourself also, after what do I have? And you take stock, you take a little inventory there. Um, what will make this better? Is there anything I can do? Anything in my thinking, in my speaking, in my attitude that I can add to this that will make it better? Um, is there anything I can do that will make it work a little more? Um, now, we have all seen people, maybe us even, but I suspect not if you're watching this morning, uh, we have all uh, seen people, uh, we all have those people in our life who look at everything like the glass is half empty. In fact, they look at life sometimes like the glass is half empty, it's cracked, and it's leaking, okay? Because they are just so immersed in negativity. The problem with that, though, is that when life happens to you, you're defeated before you start. When a challenge happens, when a growth opportunity happens, when something that's difficult shows up in our life, if you are negative, you've already lost the battle, right? Uh, it's very different, uh, excuse me, it's very, very difficult for God, for spirit, for life, for the universe to bring anything good into your life and your life experience when you are being negative. It's almost like the negativity, that limitation, that fearful speak throws up a wall. And so when the universe tries to bring something good to you, you've deflected it with that negativity. Um, we don't just think positive in the science of mind. Let me say that. What I believe is so is that we, uh, we have a realization of the affirmative in life. You know, in Eric Butterworth's wonderful book, Spiritual Economics, he says that we don't affirm things to make them true. We affirm because those greater goods that we are affirming are already so in the infinite mind of God. Right? So it's already true in the mind of God. So what we're saying is already so. We're not affirming to make something true. We're not having a good attitude to try and make anything happen. We have a good attitude because there is a place within us where we absolutely trust that everything in life is unfolding exactly as it should, even when it looks like it isn't. It's unfolding as it should. So we are, I would say we are more affirmative realizers than positive thinkers. Because the piece that I want to add to this is that we have a component of faith. That in the science of mind philosophy, we believe that life is for us, that God is for us that everything is ultimately working for a greater good. And I know that's really difficult when times are difficult to say, how can this possibly be working for a greater good? But I'm going to ask you to think big, big picture here and say that good can come out of everything. Um, negative thinking, it seems to me, for most people, destroys. Negative thinking is coming from fear, not faith. So lots of people, probably people that we know, focus on the negative, focus on the worst possible scenario, and you can count on them for this no matter what's going on. They are the voice of unconditional negativity, fear, doubt, and limitation. Maybe I'm the only person who has people like that in my life, but I suspect you do too. Right? So I have seen people, OK, I'll even include myself in this, uh, who do not try sometimes because, or have not tried because they were afraid, uh, afraid to fail, afraid of the pain of disappointment, afraid that they would look bad, afraid of what other people would think. And so they say to themselves, why, why will I even try? Right? But this kind of negative thinking will destroy your life. I mean, go ahead, give it a try if you want. You know, one of our teachers, Emma Curtis Hopkins, says, believe what you want and then report your results. 
But most of the people I know who have been pretty negative in their thinking and their speaking, the results that they report fit right along with that, right? That if your mindset is negative, you're going to have a negative experience in life. See, nobody has ever told me, you know, my life is so much better because I'm a negative thinker, <laughs> because I'm limited, because I'm fearful. My life is so much richer and fuller, right? Uh, I, you know, what that says, you know, if, if that's how we were living, that's like saying into the universal mind, I have low hopes. Yes, low hopes. I mean, what's the point of that? I never expect to succeed. I never expect to get much out of life. I imagine things are actually horrible and getting worse all the time. Oh my God, what good could possibly come out of a mindset like that? Science of mind teaches us, just like Jesus taught us, that it is done unto you as you believe, right? So again, Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of our teachers, her metaphysical rule number one is don't complain, right? Because it's very hard for the universe to do anything good in your life when you're complaining. See, we direct our thinking. That's what we talk about in Science of Mind all the time. We are the person who thinks the thought that creates the thing or the experience in life. We direct our thinking. Ernest Holmes says in our Science of Mind textbook that treatment is a, a, a prayer treatment or affirmative prayer is a movement of thought along a definite line for a specific purpose, right? Isn't that wonderful? A movement of thought along a definite line for a specific purpose. So we, need to, we don't talk, think, focus, pray on what you don't want, but on what you do want, right? What we think about daily determines how we feel about life and ourself. What we think about daily determines the actions that we take. It actually shapes our very existence, our destiny. So a little negativity from, say, a friend or a family member or a coworker can really poison you. And this is why I talk about this so much, that someone's negativity, their doubt and fear and limitation can actually be like a little bit of poison. You know, I, I like to drink tea. And I drink my tea just the way that nature made it. I don't like to add any sugar to it. But you know, a teaspoon of sugar into a cup of tea completely changes that cup of tea, doesn't it? Or if you cook, like if you bake, if you add a teaspoon of salt to something that doesn't call for salt, that completely changes what you're making there. You know? I, I think about it like this, that if you, if you were to drive through, because nobody goes in anymore, if you were to drive through a Starbucks, there are lots of drive through Starbucks around us here. Uh, you have to actually specify your order. You know, you have to say, I want a latte, I want a frappuccino. You don't say, I'll take whatever you got, you know, and charge me whatever you want, right? No, that's not what you do. You place an order, and you expect that that's what you're going to get. If you order a latte, you expect to actually get a latte. And if you don't get what you want, you send it back. Right? You know, every day we have to put positivity into our mind and into the mind of the world that we live in. This helps us have a better outlook on life and create a better quality of life for us, but also for the world we live in. We're just not affirmative realizers and thinking positively for ourselves. We're doing it to change the vibration, the frequency of, of the thinking of our entire world. See, negativity is always out there, it seems to me. I think we have to resist it, right? It's easy to be a pessimist. You know, it's easy to be skeptical. I love it when people tell me when they're being really, really negative, they say, oh, I'm just a realist, you know? Well, maybe it's because they have been disappointed or hurt or let down so many times that it just seems like, well, it's easier to be negative. If I have a negative attitude, I won't get hurt. Maybe they think if I have a negative attitude, I won't be disappointed or let down. This way I can just give up. Look, if you look for what's wrong, I promise you, you will find it. If you look for what's wrong, you will find it. But in the process, you will destroy your dreams and give up what you want in life. A different approach is to always be looking for what's good, what's beautiful, what's right, what's positive in life and in people and in the world that we live in. See, your future does not have to look like your past. Isn't that wonderful? Ernest Holmes says the principle we work with is not bound by precedent. And so that means our future doesn't have to look anything like the past because each of us right now, we are the present becoming the future. We are not our past. 
So you have to have a vision of how you want things to be. And I'm a fan of being specific. I call it being definite with the infinite, right? You have to be specific. Make it be in your mind the way you want it to be. And that's how you have to see it in your mind's eye. So my suggestions for us, first of all, are to focus on what is right. Focus on the solution. Focus on the goal. Focus on the dream. And make focusing on that a habit. You know, there used to be, um, uh, and I'm sure we still have it in our bookstore, a little book called The Seven Day Mental Diet. And the idea is that you would abstain, that we would all abstain from anything of a negative nature. Saying anything, thinking anything uh, negative for one entire week. And if you do catch yourself, then, now it's not that you will never have a negative thought, but you don't run with it, okay? Now, if you do catch yourself running with it, then you start the seven days over again. So that's a lot of incentive, you know, to not do that. So for seven days, I will not think one negative thought. Um, I won't speak it uh, if I've thought it, and I will let it go immediately if it's in my mind. And, and, you know, and what to do instead, it's that wonderful Emmett Fox, I mean, yeah, Emmett Fox's golden key, where he says, think of, don't think about what you don't want, think about God instead. Don't think about the problem, think about God instead. Don't think about the difficulty, think about God instead. The second thing I want to share is I think that instead of judging others, you know how people are, we get so negative about other people sometimes, maybe become curious instead of judging. And, because it's easy, it's not a great talent to find fault, you know? If, but if we ask you, what makes this person the way they are? What makes them tick? What's really going on here? God, help me to have compassion for this person and see them the way you see them. I think that is actually useful. The next thing is to decide to find something good in any person or situation. You know, say something nice. You know, in any situation that you find yourself in, there's always good waiting to be uncovered and discovered. You know, it is okay. The next thing that occurs to me is that it's okay not to be perfect. I know so many people who are perfectionists, and I suspect you do too. And, you know, perfectionism is a trap because what it actually does is it encourages negativity because most people do not rise to the bar of perfection every single time. And so then when they don't, they're really hard on themselves. That's why I say it's a trap. People, people say and do things that are not the best. Welcome to life. That's all I can say. Welcome to life. The goal is for us individually to do better every day. You know, I think the only failure is to quit, right? The next thing I think, and this is very important to us as students of science of mind, is to say faith. This is what we're building. You know, it's always our job to reconcile our faith in any area of life. Like again, I said earlier, it's done unto you as you believe. And so without faith, nothing exists, it seems to me. You know, most of the things that people worry about, tell the truth, they never happen. Most of the things that people are being so negative about, a lot of it never happens. You know, the Bible tells us this Two shall pass. And so that's what we have to say when we find ourselves in a negative experience. This too shall pass. The last thing I want to share is to um, how to utilize. I think there's a way we can take something that's not as we want it to be, even a negative condition, and use it for our greater good. How? How could I do that? Well, first of all, I'm a, I'm a fan. I journal. I write. I would write about what's working in my life, you know? And then I would write what's not working in my life. And then I would describe specifically how I want it to be. And then I would create a plan. This sounds a lot like goal setting, doesn't it? Then I would create a plan. And, and if that plan is too big, then just pick the top three things, the top three next most important things. See, because you could also be negative, it occurs to me, in a positive way by asking yourself, why won't this work? If you ask yourself, why won't this work? That's not intentionally negative. That's just coming in through a different door to see what do I really think? What else is in my subjective mind that, that may be holding me back that I am not consciously aware of in this moment? And again, I suggest doing this seven-day mental diet where we have no negative thinking, where I'm not saying, oh, I hate this, 
Is there anything like that? You know, just say what you would prefer. What you would prefer. You know, so you don't have to put that negativity out there into the universe, but you get to have a preference. So, I think that nothing good ultimately comes from negativity. You can't negativity your life into being better. But being on the affirmative side of life, being an affirmative realizer, we have an infinite capacity for things to grow and heal and be better than they've ever been before. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to just remember we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit. That that principal power and presence of God that's everywhere, the living spirit is right here where we are. It surrounds us, it fills us, it fulfills us. It's the very truth of who and what we are. We are emanations of the Father, Mother, God. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, I also know we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. I speak the word for us that we are not just positive thinkers, we are affirmative realizers. That we are on the sunny side of the street where the light of God shines upon us and through us and in us and as us. And we know that everything is working together for a greater good. That the truth is we don't have all the information. No, but in the mind of God, everything that needs to be known and done is being known and done right now. So we include in our prayer our family members and friends, our parents and children and grandchildren, all of those we love and hold near and dear, and we remind ourselves that God is fully present right where they are, and everything is in divine and perfect order. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in today. So from our heart, we let emanate a frequency of love and light and healing to all people everywhere, to all who would receive it. We say the love of God surrounds you and fills you and lifts you up. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams and all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today that there is healing and upliftment for each and every one of us. So for all of this, I say thank you, God. I know it's the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. So
I have to share. Uh, one morning, Margaret called me before my Wednesday evening service, and she said, what's your topic this evening? And I said, be happy anyway. And she showed up with that song just a few hours later. Amazing. Thank you. Margaret, how do people, uh, if they would like to acquire some of your music? Uh, MargaretOwens.com. MargaretOwens.com, if you would like to purchase any of uh, Margaret's music. Thank you. Thank you so much to Sam and Karen for a beautiful musical accompaniment, as always. So glad you're all with us. Uh, thank you to all who have joined. I have to say a special thank you to all of you who are supporting us out there to make sure Facebook Live and Zoom and everything is uh, working. Um, a reminder that tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., we are starting a daily 15-minute meditation. That'll be Monday through Saturday, and Dr. Mark will be leading the meditation tomorrow. This afternoon at 1 p.m., for those who want to join Carol Winokur via Zoom uh, for grief support, uh, and also coming on May 11th will be a five-week workshop with Dr. Mark on the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. So we're just really, we're so grateful for all the ways that you are staying connected with us. And uh, we're going to keep finding more and more ways to keep connecting with you. Um, we will be in the church office until 11.15 if you would like to call in and make a donation. If you were having any difficulty uh, making a donation online, it's nhcs, pardon me, nhcrs.org forward slash give and uh, you can then make the donation online that way. Uh, prayer with practitioners that we like to provide after service. For those of you who are on Zoom, please just stay on Zoom if you'd like to have a practitioner pray with you after service, and we will put you in a breakout session with one practitioner, so you'll have a private session one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner. If you're currently on Facebook Live and would like to have prayer, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, and uh, click on the link to get onto the Zoom session. Also, if you're missing time on the patio with us after service, we're doing a virtual patio 
on Zoom, and I know I'm going to be going to my office so I can join and visit with you. Um, I don't know if Dr. Mark will have a chance, but we'll, we'll try and get him hooked up as well. So um, please, join. We, we won't. You can have your own muffins where you are, <laughs> and hopefully you have your coffee where you are, and uh, join us for a little time on the virtual patio. Um, with that, just once again, thank you so much, so much for all the ways you're staying connected with us and continuing to support us, and it's our honor to be there to support you any way we can. Let's now join in the peace song. So please repeat after me, I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.